Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio with Dr. Gregory Fontana. He's the National Medical Director for Cardiovascular Research at the Hospital Corporation of America, located in Nashville, Tennessee. In addition, he's the Director and Chairman of Cardiothoracic Surgery, Cardiovascular Institute in Los Robles Hospital and Medical Center in Thousand Oaks, California. And he's joining us here today to talk about his role at the center and also to talk about Zeltus, uh, some new developments in heart valve therapy. Welcome to Health Professional Radio today, Dr. Gregory Fontana. Glad that you could join us. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Now, Zeltus, a clinical stage medical device company, uh, talk about your role there at Zeltus and uh, give us a bit of background about yourself. Sure. Um, my, uh, I'm a cardiac surgeon by training and by practice. Uh, I've spent my um, career very much focused on so-called structural heart disease, both in children and adults, and uh, specifically looking at ways to develop less invasive and durable uh, therapies for structural heart disease, structural heart disease being predominantly valve uh, disease in adults, but also a congenital uh, heart disease in, in both children and adults as well. And uh, my, my intrigue with this uh, new uh, technology and, and the company that's supporting it is uh, I found it to be a novel, um, clearly, and, in, in what it could potentially provide. And also um, one of probably many holy grails we've, <laughs> we've sought after in our, in our lives as, as docs and specifically in this area of uh, trying to find um, some sort of a maybe a substitute for, for tissue and mechanical valves historically was something that has, you know, uh, kind of immortal durability uh, without the need to take um, anticoagulants, and uh, which is obviously quite an important issue as we age as a population and more, of, more and more of us are requiring uh, valve uh, repair or valve replacement. So to me, it's uh, been the first thing, I've, and I've seen in a long time, that really has uh, great promise to provide uh, such a solution. Briefly describe heart valve disease, what it is, and how it is that Zeltus, as you say, is approaching this disease with a novel approach. Well, first of all, you know, valve, valve heart disease is something that <clears throat> has been around for a, certainly a long time. Uh, we, we do know uh, that a, there's a tremendous amount of undertreatment um, of patients with both leaky valves and also uh, narrow valves. The most common treated are the aortic valve for aortic valve stenosis these days, uh, mostly with percutaneous transcatheter techniques. Um, some great and innovative therapies there. But we're now moving into the mitral valve, which is a much larger population of, of unmet uh, therapies. In fact, uh, we probably operate around 30,000 mitral valves in the United States each year for a leaky valve or a narrow valve. And there are estimated between one and two million people with, with significant mitral valve disease. So we're there's a tremendous amount of disease out there that's untreated um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, some patients may not be uh, appropriate for having open heart surgery or even percutaneous therapies, but there's a tremendous population of patients in the United States. And if you take worldwide um, in developing and developed countries, it probably at least doubles what, uh, what, the, um, what the number of patients are in this country. And we certainly expect, to, you know, the decades to come that we're looking at the aging population and the incidence of um, aortic stenosis in particular, but other valvular lesions is, is going up uh, substantially, and we expect that to go up uh, more and more over the decades. So what, um, what Zeltus has uh, come up with is actually um, an applied concept based on a, a Nobel Prize uh, uh, winning uh, uh, chemistry uh, award that's now about 30, 30 years ago where a, uh, an absorbable polymer uh, can be actually uh, created into a, a, um, an a architectural shape uh, that mimics um, human valves. And this polymer, which is porous, uh, allows uh, the body's own um, uh, blood cells to get into, in, you know, to get into this matrix and, uh, and develop um, and restore, really, a normal leaflet. This is the, this is the, um, this is the goal. And because the polymer is absorbable, uh, once it has the, the matrixes played its role, it will it will basically melt away or dissolve, leaving uh, a normal uh, functioning leaflet. Um, so, uh, when I say holy grail, I, I think restorative therapy—the idea of being able to restore um, a, a valve to its normal configuration, its normal function, and its normal durability—is uh, something that is that is clearly novel um, and would would really be at the holy grail for for about treatment of valvular heart disease. So now normally the valves stay in place, the tissue kind of develops around that valve. 
It's never taken out unless, of course, there's a need. But normally it stays in there, but it's still surrounded by tissue. What you're talking about is actually dissolving away and the tissue being replaced and the valve itself moving right. away. Now, um, right. are there clinical trials being conducted right now? There's uh, several, there's several uh, stages of trial going on. There, there are preclinical trials um, looking at valves in the a, um, aortic valve position. Uh, these are surgically implanted valves that have been in animals and now followed out for one and even two years. Um, and the, valve, the valves have been looked at at various intervals. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to ensure that they essentially tune uh, this material so that it absorbs at the right rate given the environment and the challenges of being in you know, the systemic circulation. Um, and seeing systolic blood pressures and diastolic blood pressures. Um, and so far, so good. In fact, the data is, is quite promising. It's been about, analyzed by some of the world's greatest authorities in, in cardiac uh, pathology. And uh, so far, uh, doesn't they seem to be performing very well in preclinical. Now, in the clinical side, there's been two couple of feasibility trials ongoing uh, abroad and uh, in, in a pediatric population, and one was in a vascular graft, a so-called Fontan operation, which is a venous tube in, uh, that's placed in children with born with only one ventricle. And uh, those patients have done extremely well, obviously a, kind of a low bar in the sense that the pressure on the venous side is quite low, but the, the, uh, the conduit has remained um, patent. The, the hope is obviously if you're putting these in little children, and you leave behind um, uh, only tissue that will grow uh, according to the, the patient's, uh, you know, uh, needs. And so that's, so that's so far so good. And the other trial that's going on abroad is replacing um, the pulmonary valve, uh, predominantly in kids with tetralogy of Fallot or pulmonary atresia, connecting the right ventricle to the pulmonary arteries with the valve in place. And that, that feasibility trial is ongoing internationally. The children are out, uh, some of them, several years now. And that trial is being rolled into the United States starting this next year in 18 in four of our top pediatric uh, centers in the U.S. So there's three clinical trials um, that, are, that are very promising so far in the aortic valve position. There's clinical trials now on the right side of the heart in children abroad now rolling into the United States for the FDA uh, IDE trial starting hopefully first quarter of 18. Is this new tissue any more resistant to the conditions that caused the uh, valve to, to fail in the first place? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. We don't know. But, uh, you know, I think it depends a little bit on the valve pathology. In the, in the case of aortic valve stenosis, um, the vast majority of aortic valve stenosis is a degenerative process. It seems if uh, that valve opens and closes a few billion times over lifetime, it tends to get stiff, calcify, and degenerate. and the thought is that the wear and tear and the kind of inflammation that occurs with that eventually is decalcification and that the calcium keeps the valve from being mobile. A smaller percentage of those patients have, are born with something called bicuspid valve disease and that, that uh, geometry uh, seems to put greater stress on, on the leaflets and they degenerate sooner. Uh, often we'll see them, well, I can see them in childhood, but more often the 50s, 60s, and 70s rather than later as we would see in more de normal degenerative disease. But if you, if you restore uh, the aortic valve with a normal trileaflet anatomy, we could hope that the bicuspid patients actually would have a much more durable uh, solution for tricuspid aortic valve. Um, now, I, I, I think that maybe what you could say is it could probably reset the clock. If it took you 80 years to get aortic stenosis uh, with your, with your God-given valve, uh, and we give you something that maybe lasts half that long, I think we're going to be, I think that that's really a win. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, and I think the other, and the other part of that question, you know, if, when it comes to if you compare it to alternatives, which we have today, which are predominantly porcine or bovine um, uh, tissue valves, that uh, this valve is a valve that is one's own tissue. And, and theoretically, um, the, the inflammation that may occur from responding to something that's foreign uh, will not be part of the equation. So uh, if you can restore your own tissue, the body should, will not see it as foreign, obviously, because it's your own as opposed to uh, the tissue solutions that are available off the shelf uh, today. And where can we learn more about Zeltis? Well, I think the best place to go uh, is onto the website, which is X-E-L-T-I-S. Um, it's, uh, it's a very nice website. It gives you some information on what, what's going on uh, with the technology they have in-house. And there's some uh, references to uh, literature and some, um, some of the um, presentations that have gone on at national and international meetings, including TCT and 
ACC and the Euro- European meetings, European Association for Cardiothoracic Surgery, et cetera. And, and also there's some publications in peer-reviewed journals that uh, for those who want to get a little more granular on what's what's going on. It's very it's very interesting. Uh, I got to say that the technology and the chemistry is uh, is incredibly impressive and, and kind of the way it way the uh, spinning of the polymer occurs and how that's able to be uh, tuned. So more of that is probably is unavailable on the website for those uh, who are curious to find out more. www.xeltis.com, zeltis.com. Dr. Gregory Fontana, member of the Medical Advisory Board with Zeltis. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in today. My pleasure. And thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. On this health supplier segment, transcripts and audio of the program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.